What's going on everyone? DSP here and welcome to another edition of the Hateful Truth video game review series. Uh, today we're going to be talking about a very unique game. A game that's probably going to be heralded as one of the best games of the year for a change. A game that actually transcends the form of just gaming and really can be considered a beautiful complete work of art. And of course, I'm talking about Body Count for the Xbox 360. I think I must be sick because this game fucking sucks, okay? Let's talk a little bit about this game, exactly what it is, how it came about, and then a little bit about the end product of what ended up coming out of this, okay? Body Count. Odd name for a game, don't you think? Just Body Count. So the whole idea of the game is to kill as many people as you can. But... What does that mean? Is it, is, it, is it a straightforward FPS game where there's a campaign with a story and you go from locale to locale doing different objectives? Or is it more of an objective-based kind of a, a game, maybe like Brink, where you just need to do certain things during the stages? Or maybe is it a point ranking system where, depending on how you kill enemies and if you use special things to kill them, uh, you get higher score and multipliers and you unlock things, such as in the game Bulletstorm? Well... This game tries everything and does absolutely nothing well whatsoever. So Body Count, made by Codemasters, okay? Now, to give you a little bit of background, because there was some little bit of confusion about some things that I had said when I originally said I was going to play this game and regarding the development of this game. Um, Body Count was in development by the makers of Black. Now, if you're not aware what Black is, it was an FPS game that was a single-player FPS game uh, that came out in the mid-90s, it was an Xbox and PS2 title. It ended up being a cult hit. A lot of people said, you know, okay, the graphics aren't the best, but the gameplay's pretty original. It had some really interesting things to it that made it become successful, even though it was only a single-player FPS, which actually was kind of rare. And so the developers of that game were working on a new game that they said would be the spiritual success... Spirit spiritual successor to Black, meaning it wouldn't officially be a sequel, but it would basically be the next generation version of Black. And the original developers of Black, the name of this game studio was Criterion Games. But Criterion Games doesn't exist anymore. The people who worked for that actually were working for Codemasters, this other company. Uh, but what ended up happening was, a couple years into development of this game, the two head people who were in charge of the development of Black left Codemasters. And so you can really tell that's where the project derailed, okay? So what this game seems to do is take some of the more popular ideas from other games and tries to smash them together. And you can tell that it really feels like an unpolished product. It almost feels like an unfinished product. Almost like they had an idea of where they were going and then the two people who were in charge of the direction of the game left and the people were like, well, fuck, we gotta just finish this game and, uh, and sell it. And, uh, you know, or else we're going to cut a loss here for all the, the development work that we've already put into this game. But we really don't know what to do with it, so let's just whip it together as much as we can and get it the fuck out there. And uh, it really shows in this game. First of all, let's talk a little bit about the gameplay. The gameplay of Body Count is pretty generic. It's a run-and-gun FPS. There's really next to no strategy involved whatsoever in the game. And you start out with two weapons, a primary and a secondary, and oddly enough, the first weapon you get in the game is a shotgun, which, in what FPS game have you ever played where the first gun ever you, you have to use is a shotgun? I can't name one. It's always been an assault rifle, maybe if it's a starter mission, you start with a pistol, you have to kill someone to take their weapon. None of that in this game, okay? In this game, you start a level with a loadout, and that's what you have through the whole level. You can't collect items and, and get better weapons by playing through it, you actually unlock guns between stages, so it's kind of awkward. In some stages, they have a weapon cache area and on the map, and if you go there, you can now switch your loadout, but outside of that, you just have to wait until the next stage comes before you can see what new guns have unlocked and what you can use and what you can't use. Oddly enough, most of the guns are identical, meaning an assault rifle versus a machine gun Pretty much fire exactly the same. Some of them might be a three-round burst, some of them might be a full automatic, but they all shoot perfectly straight. They all do pretty much the same kind of damage, and 
there's oddly enough, there's no gun in this game with any kind of a zoom feature. There's no sniper rifle. There's no assault rifle with like an ACOG. There's nothing you can use to view enemies that are far away. And what's really odd is there are parts of this game where you have to fight snipers, but there's no way for you to ever zoom in on them. So you just end up doing very small bursts of fire with your full automatic gun, like ba-boom, 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 and hope that the bullets hit them. And it's really odd. It's a very odd design choice that it almost feels, again, like this game was unfinished. Like, they got halfway through development, and then people left, and they said, fuck it, just finish it, just put a stamp on it, don't even add anything new to it. Um, the graphics. The graphics of this game are nothing to be too proud of. They're not bad, don't get me wrong. It's not like you're playing a game on the Wii. It definitely looks better than GoldenEye 007 or Conduit 2 did on the Wii, but the textures are boring, there really isn't that much detail, and the actual enemies are extremely repetitive. There are actually parts in this game where three or four of the same fucking guy, they look identical, will run out on the screen and attack you at once. And you're like, are you shitting me? It's, it's fucking four ch Ching Chongs, you know, from this one part of the game where you're in Asia and you're fighting uh, people in China, and they look like you're fighting an identical twins or identical triplets or identical quadruplets at some points. It's just, it's lazy game development. And you gotta wonder what the hell happened here, okay? The gameplay itself of this game, like I said, it's run and gun, and it's very odd because they try to add elements of other FPS games and put it into this one, and it just never really comes together. There's a system where it's called skill kills, okay, which immediately would remind you of Bullet Storm, where the way that you kill an enemy actually gives you points per se, and so. The better, the, the more chains of cool kills, like if you get five headshots in a row, it gives you more points, per se, on the scoring system. Um, there's also other things like explosions, landmine kills, grenade kills, environmental kills, but it's never, ever anywhere close to what Bulletstorm was, because considering all you have are grenades, landmines, which all you do is put down and hope an enemy steps on it stupidly, or your guns. So there's really only three ways to kill anything. Shoot it, blow it up, or make them walk over a mine. And that's it. Unlike Bulletstorm where you had a tether, you had all these unique weapons that everything killed in a different way, and they had alternate modes of fire. These guns all have one mode of fire, nothing complicated whatsoever here about the gameplay. So it's almost like it feels like that was something they tapped on at the end of the game. And the other thing is, it doesn't affect the game in any way. There's no effect on the game with this scoring system. It's completely worthless, and it doesn't make any sense that it's even in the game. Uh, all The only time you even know about the scoring system is at the end of every stage, you get a score where you get graded at A through F on how you did on the stage. I never got above a C, and probably because I didn't give a fuck. The game never explains to you what these skill kills even are. There's no tutorial, so you would never know that you're supposed to be trying to rack up points to get a better score and it just ends up being really pointless at the end of the day. Um, the AI in this game is god-awful, okay? It ranges between one of two things. Either the enemies wander out into the middle of an open area like morons and completely miss you. I've actually had times where enemies were running straight towards me, and when they were about to fire, they went, oh, oh, oh boom, 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 and shot into the sky. And it's like, what the fuck? Did they put any effort into the AI of this game? It just makes no sense. Now the flip side of that is at some points the AI is amazingly good and you'll go out and you'll be shooting a guy on the ground from a high point and you'll have no idea there's anyone else even out there on the map. Two snipers will walk out and simultaneously snipe you and kill you instantly. And you're like, what the fuck, man? Like, how can you have such a large dichotomy of gameplay? At the one point, it's really just mindless running and gunning because the enemies are so stupid. You can actually endlessly run around these stages and probably won't ever die. That's how dumb the enemies are. If you run by them, they never come after you again. If you're out of that one room they were responsible for guarding, they're like, eh, I did my job, fuck that, he got by, well, unless he comes back, I'm never going to go after him. And it's really odd. Now, you do have health in this game, but, again, trying to copy off of other FPS games, there's no life bar. So you never actually know how much life you have. The game does turn like a redder, uh, a redder tinge to the screen as you're getting shot, but it's really never clear how far is too far and when exactly you're going to die, which is going to lead to a couple frustrating deaths when you think that you have enough life to get through an area or to f finish killing off one or two people, and then you find out you don't and you die. So 
sorry, this game sucks. Um, <laughs> the game does have some abilities that you unlock. Now, again, you don't unlock them by finding things in the game, by completing objectives. You simply unlock them by beating the stages. And there's four primary abilities. The first one is uh, invincibility. And when you turn this on, obviously while it's on, you're invincible and impervious to harm. Another one is a pinging uh, ability, which basically pings everyone on the screen, so you'll be able to see everyone on your radar. And then as you level this up, which really you don't level it up, all it means is you beat a later stage and it levels itself up, it eventually kills everything within the radar's reach when you ping it, okay? Then there's a incendiary ammo ability, which basically makes your ammo more powerful so you can kill people easily, which helps out against some of the tougher guys in the game later on in the game. And the final thing is an airstrike, which you can only use in very limited parts of this game. <clears throat> what it primarily is, is when you're in outdoor areas, you can drop a bomb from the sky and kill multiple enemies at the same time. Now, how do you use these abilities? Well, as you kill enemies, they drop what's called intel, which pretty much amounts to a fucking exclamation point that sits on the ground. And it's pretty hilarious when you start killing these guys and these fucking exclamation points are flying all over the screen and you're like, what the hell's going on here? Uh, so as you kill enemies, you collect intel, which fills up a meter. And this meter can be used to use any of those four abilities. Now, some of the abilities can only be used when the meter is full, such as the airstrike or the leveled up ping ability that kills everything on the screen at once. Other ones can be used on the fly, but you can only use them for a limited time depending on how much energy you have in your intel gauge and that would be for the invincibility and the incendiary ammo now you might think that this game might be interesting because of these four things but don't be fooled 99 percent of the game you don't need them the one you're going to use the most by far is the invincibility one when you're finally being overwhelmed by so many enemies at once that you just can't seem to survive and find cover and to talk to that point there is no cover system in this game. The game thinks it has a cover system, but it doesn't. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, like most FPS games, the left trigger is your zoom. So it's not really a zoom, it's you're looking down your sights. Well, in this game, if you get near any object in the game and you hold down left trigger, you go into what's called a lean mode, which means you, your character will go like this and start firing crooked. It's completely useless. It doesn't actually work like any cover system should work. 99% of the time, you'll do it by accident when you're trying to look down the sights, and it's going to frustrate you because you thought that you were going to get an accurate shot and be able to kill the enemy, and instead, you just went like this, and now it's just as hard to shoot that enemy. So it's a completely worthless feature. What they say in the instruction booklet is if you hold down the trigger halfway, that you can accurately look down the sights, and you'll never actually accidentally lean. But you never need to lean, that's my point. There, you don't actually take cover. It's not like Deus Ex, it's not like Uncharted, it's not like any of these games that have a cover system. There is no cover system in this game. So all you're doing is leaning to the side and you're just as vulnerable as you were before. It's completely worthless. So, that's the gameplay of this game. You run around shooting repetitive enemies that all look identical, and some of them will have other weapons, but you'll never know it. Uh, more often than not, you're going to be fighting in the same repetitive locales. There's really only three locations in this entire game. There's Africa, Asia, and this underground Nexus bunker that kind of looks like a Tron-esque uh, environment where everyone wears these weird uh, shape costumes. I guess the best way I can say it is that everyone looks like a fucking pyramid head from uh, Silent Hill, but their whole bodies are like that. They're covered in these octagons and triangles. And it really has never explained what the fuck's going on, who the fuck these people are, what the point of the whole game is. You never have any idea what's really going on in this game. You're just trying to blow shit up. And the game does a poor job. It really does. Uh, the, the most satisfaction you'll get out of this game is blowing shit up. Meaning, oh, finally there's an explosive barrel. Watch this. And you shoot it, and five dudes go flying away from the barrel. And it's hilarious because they have the, you know, the crazy ragdoll animations in the air. But outside of that... There's nothing interesting about this game. And the, other, the one other thing that you can do in this game is a melee attack. It's a slow, pathetic melee attack where you put your gun away, you see your hand draw a machete, and it's like a slow ooh, machete thrust. 90% of the time you're going to miss your target because by the time that it finally comes out, they've already stepped to the side. But 
it is an instant kill when it hits, but it's not satisfying at all because it's so slow. It leaves you completely open, and other people end up shooting you in the back. So it's a complete waste of time. The one thing that I thought was a little bit cool was some of the music. So it's like techno house music beats in some of this thing. But let's face it, it's generic techno music. It's not anything that's a, that you're going to want to listen to when the game's over. So, ugh. The, the campaign itself is less than four hours long. A $60 retail release has a campaign that's less than four hours long. Even Call of Duty, which everyone complains that the campaign is short, has more content than the campaign of this game and outshines it on a two-to-one scale, okay? Now you might say, okay, well that's just the campaign. Alright, what else is there in the game? Well, there is a two-player co-op mode that can only be played online. There's no split-screen co-op here. So yeah, you actually have to convince a friend to buy this game if you want to try the co-op. And there's really nothing special about it. It's just a standard kind of horde mode, survive a couple waves of enemies, and then get an achievement for it. That's it. There's nothing complex. There's no missions. There's no campaign to play co-op. It's just a horde survival mode. And I would love to tell you about the multiplayer of this game because this game offers both deathmatch and team deathmatch online competitive multiplayer modes. There's one problem with that, though. They don't work. And I'm not kidding you, I tried it. When I beat the campaign of this game, I jumped online. I said, well, the campaign sucked. Maybe the online play will redeem itself. And first I went to a team deathmatch lobby, and I waited and waited and waited, and the lobby kind of filled up. You need to, the, the lobby is a 12-person capacity, okay? And right off the bat, I noticed there were eight people, four on one side, four on the other. We were all readied up to play the game, and the game wasn't starting. And we said, I wonder what's going on. Maybe... Then we figured, well, let's try Deathmatch. So I went into regular Deathmatch. And again, the room, I had maybe eight, ten people. Everyone was ready. The game never started. And everyone got confused. And everyone was talking to each other with voice chat over Xbox Live. Gee, did anyone ever play an online game of this yet? No, this is my first time trying. Yup, it's my first time too. Well, have you, has it ever started? Nope, I'm trying to get it to start. And for whatever reason, the lobby doesn't start. So then we said, all right, maybe this is really dumb. Maybe they, the game developers are really just amateurs. And they made it so that the game room actually has to be completely full. It has to have a full session of 12 people for it to start. So I sat in Deathmatch for about 10 to 15 minutes, and we could not get this room to fill up with the Team Deathmatch. Um, so then I went to regular Deathmatch, and the room did fill up. A full 12 people. Everyone readied up, and we fucking sat there like logs. The game never starts. This game has multiplayer that doesn't work. They didn't test the multiplayer. They had no idea that there's a bug that the multiplayer rooms don't start the game. You just sit there in matchmaking like a fucking asshole, and the multiplayer never starts. Are you kidding me? This game is a $60 release with non-functional multiplayer that they didn't fucking test. What a bunch of fucking assholes. How angry can I possibly get $60? For a campaign that's less than four hours long, an unfinished game with horrendous repetitive gameplay, and an online multiplayer that doesn't fucking work. Anyone who's sitting on their couch right now holding a retail copy of this game is an asshole. Well, I'm the exception because I had to buy the game to play it and let you know that this game fucking sucks, okay? So, here's the thing. I can't give the game any points for multiplayer because the multiplayer doesn't work. I can maybe give the game minimal points for the co-op because it's the same co-op you've played in every fucking FPS ever that has a survival mode, and the campaign is fucking balls. So how do you rate a game that's zero, one, and balls? You give it a fucking three. Body count is a three. The only reason it even gets any points is because the campaign does work. It is frustrating in parts, but it's not insanely frustrating. I would say there actually is one game this year that's worse than this game, and that game is Conduit 2. And the reason Conduit 2 is worse than this game is because the graphics sucked, the gameplay sucked, the story sucked, and, on top of all that, there were parts of the game that were insanely hard and took me like a half an hour to get past. In this game, there was probably only one part where I kept dying, and I beat it after, say, five minutes. So, that being said, maybe it's a good thing that this game is as short as it is. Because if I had to play any more of this fucking game than I already did, I probably would have fucking threw up all over my condo. So, Body Count, one of the worst games I've played this year. One of the actual worst games I think I've ever played in my life. 
a horrible, horrible effort by Codemasters. I can't believe they charge $60 for this game. Anyone who paid $60 for this game, Codemasters should refund them at least half of what they paid. This should have been an online DLC title over Xbox Live Arcade or the PlayStation Network. There was no reason for this to ever be a retail release. What it really seems to me is that this was a game that, again, was supposed to be the spiritual successor to Black, but the people who were in charge of the project quit the company, and they ended up just slapping shit together in a box and saying, oh, look, here it is, and then not really being honest with everyone and saying that this is an unfinished, incomplete game. This game sucks. It gets a three. Don't fucking buy it unless you actually like to hurt yourself. But I actually recommend ramming your head repeatedly into the fucking wall until it sticks there like an ostrich sticking his head into the sand because you're probably going to get more enjoyment out of that just from the delirium of smashing your head against the wall and not knowing where you are or what's going on. The pretty birdies and stars spinning around your head is going to be more entertaining than playing Body Count. Body Count gets a three. It fucking sucks. This game is a disgrace. Codemasters are now a disgrace. They owe everyone money who paid for this game. Fuck this stupid shit. I'm DSP. This is The Hateful Truth. Fuck that stupid fucking game. And I'm glad that I get to do reviews like this to save people from, like you from thinking because of reviews for people saying, oh, it's the spiritual successor to Black, that that game is even worth a look. It's not even worth a rental. That game isn't even worth being a coaster on my fucking table to put my mug on, okay? It's fucking a piece of shit. Don't buy it. Thanks a lot. I'll see you next time for The Hateful Truth.